Okay, today is July 23rd, 2015, and I am here with... Gina Tino. Gina Tino. Okay, Gina, how did you hear about Corrupt CT? I've heard about Corrupt CT for years now. Um, and why did you contact us? I contacted Corrupt CT because I felt like my story needs to be heard. Um, there's just a lot that's been going on that I feel needs to be out there. Okay. So, can you bring us back to November 24th, 2014? Yes. What happened to your daughter in foster care? Um, she was abused. I got a phone call while I was at work um, that my daughter had some welts and bruises on her. Now, how old is your daughter? She's three and a half. Okay. Now. <clears throat> um, and the foster mother contacted DCF to make it look like it came from my house over a visit, but that happened, but the visit was um, days prior to, and she went to the doctors for them on that Wednesday, and the doctor said that the bruises were new, that happened, you know, that day. Um, and that there was no way that they could have happened on a Friday or a Saturday the day that she was at my house. So DCF and the your daughter's pediatrician said it was actually the foster parent, is that correct? Yes. That abused her? Yes. Okay. Um, now, going, you know, she was then removed from that home and into your care, correct? Yes, we were in the middle of reunification process at that time. So because the foster mother wasn't participating in it correctly, they fastened, speeded up the... They sped up the reunification <laughs> yeah. process. Yeah. Okay. okay. And um, by December 16th, she was in the house with me. Okay. Now, just recently, your daughter had to be uh, removed and placed into DCF custody. Unfortunately, yes. Yes. And when was this? That was June 15th of this, this year. year. So June 15th, 2015, she was uh, put in DCF custody. Now, did she go back with that foster parent at first? No. She was with my aunt and then... Um, she was removed from my aunt and put with a non-relative foster parent, okay. and then while my DCF worker Tyrone Napper was on vacation, Tyrone Napper, you said? Yes. Okay. Was on vacation. They removed my daughter Friday at seven o'clock p.m. Leaving a little time for and you to get a hold of family. Yes. And I was not contacted. I actually had to find out from my three and a half year old on our visit Saturday when she told me that she was back with Robin. So and that was the foster parent that mm -hmm. had abused her? Oh. Yes. yes. Back in November of 2014? Yes. And she's still currently with her? Yes. And how, what do you feel? How do you feel about that? You must be very upset. I'm very upset about it. My daughter's well-being isn't being taken into consideration. They know about, DCF knows about, you know, the bruisings and... I, I saw the pictures, the welts. That's, that's horrible. Horrible. Yes. And, and when I spoke to DCF about it Monday morning, I was told that she was going to be staying there, even though they know about this. And, you know, DCF is supposed to be protecting the children. And I don't feel like that's happening right now. You know, when this happened, Janelle Dupree, who was my caseworker at that time, told me to press charges against the foster mother for the abuse. And they were going to help you, is that correct? They were going to help me. And now... And you didn't want to do that at that time? You just wanted your daughter home and... 
you know, to, to work on that relationship with your daughter. Yeah, That's, I just didn't want to do to anything that would be more devastating towards my daughter. I was just trying to get her home and safe. And at that time, getting her home as fast as possible was the safest thing for her. Right. And now, you know, they put her right back there knowing all these issues and it really is concerning to me. Especially knowing that she was abused in the care of this foster parent. Yes. yes. So have you reached out to the department yes. regarding this issue? Yes. What are they saying? I called them Monday and they told me that they were keeping her there. And, you know, it, it upset me. I might have not had the nicest conversation with the supervisor, but you know, coming from a mother who cares about her child, I think anybody would be upset and right. confused on why you would put my child right back with the abuser. And when there's, you know, my family, two of my family members are fighting to have my daughter and they're, you know, they slowing just... down the pro process for that. And, and right. So that's difficult. And you said that they laughed at you? They laughed at me when I told them, you know, my concerns. And, you know, they laughed at me when I was like, you're putting my daughter right with an abuser and knowing this, you're not going to remove her. She said, yeah, Gina, and that's what's going to happen right now. And when I told her I was going to the media about it, she said, well, Gina, you can do whatever you want. Have a nice day and hung up on me. And it's not a joke. It's it's not a it's joke at all. My daughter, she's three and a half years old. She's been through a lot already and she's been brainwashed by this woman, you know, prior to also. Uh, you know, she was told I'm not her mother and that I don't love her and that's not true. It's not true. Now this oh. case came from the Torrington DC office DCF office and now is in the Hartford DCF office. Yes. Now, we'll just touch on this quickly. Do you see a difference between the two departments? I do. I do. Um, you know, DCF and Torrington um, was not trying to help me at all or anything. When they got switched over to Hartford, you know, the reunification process went smoothly. I felt that DCF, you know, saw right through the foster mom and her little gains you know, and her false comments towards me and, you know, trying to make it look like I was abusing my daughter. They saw through that, I thought. And for them to put Bianca right back with her, it's just, it's appalling to me. It's, I just don't understand it. I don't It, it is, it. it is very hard to understand and, um... You know, she's been there for oh, since June now. Yeah. And, and there's documentations. It's not like it's just hearsay. There's documentations. Of right. The doctors have it. You know, I have it. DCF has it. There's documentations. It's black and white. Didn't you tell me that you tried contacting DCF uh, regarding the special investigation and they didn't have the paperwork anymore? Yes. So um, it just disappeared? It Okay. Nobody knows where I went. And that happens a lot within DCF. A lot of things go misplaced when it's convenient. An issue happens. Yeah. Now, I mean, your daughter was removed for your from your care due to, you know, situations, but you never abused your daughter. You never put her in a dangerous situation. Um, mm -hmm. And reunification was there. You had her back. I had her back for six months. And within that six months, I got her potty trained fully. I got her off the binky. I here's an award that um, for perfect attendance at attendance at school. You know, this is for just two months, but you know. Can you hold it up? Yep. But you know, since she started going to daycare, she was always on time. They just started recognizing it. You know, a few months back. But it still means a lot. It does. That's and great. So, I mean... Bianca I, I, goes to therapy, and, you know, she's 
she understands that I'm her mom now. She she's better with her temper and listening skills than she was whenever she first got home. Right. So when you she, went through a lot to work with her to get her out of certain, you know, behaviors or um, you know things that she would do. You said. Yes. And now that she's back in this place, I uh, just one night. Yeah. From Friday to Saturday when I seen her last Saturday when all this happened, she's, you know, telling me I'm not her mommy. And she was only with that foster parent one night. I, I see her this Saturday and I can only imagine what my little girl is going to be saying and doing. There was a diaper in the diaper bag. And when I asked my daughter, why is there a diaper in here? And she said, I, I told foster mommy that, you know, I don't wear them anymore, but she says I have accidents. So and you use she's a pull-up. Yeah, she's already, like, telling my daughter what she has and doesn't have, you know? So do you feel this foster parent wants your daughter I do. as for herself? I do. I that's, do. that's sad because, um, I mean, the pictures, I've seen a lot of pictures, I've seen a lot of videos with you and your daughter, and she seems like a wonderful little girl. So yeah, I mean, it would be understandable for somebody to have that thought of wanting to keep her, but as a foster parent, you should know, it's just a short period of time you're going to have the child, you know? So it, it, it's, it's very disturbing, very disturbing to me that she's back with the abuser after the pictures I've seen of what happened to your little girl. That is not okay, and it's not for the department to be placing the child back with the, the abuser. It's not fair to my baby. She. It's know, not fair to her. Like I told DCF, you want to give my kid back to me right now, and I've never even hit my child. That's not why you guys have my child. And you guys know this woman's hit my kid, and you still put her back with her. What makes that okay? Right. In the department, can't tell me anything but laugh at me and think it's a joke. It's not, it's a, not joke. a joke. She's three and a half years old. She doesn't have a say. I have to speak for her. Right. And I have to advocate for my little girl. And I mean, I believe that you're doing a great job doing that. So, you know, hopefully they get the message that this is not okay. And no, they wouldn't give her back to you. And you've never abused her. And it's very sad. Now, you had court today. Yes, I did. In Hartford? Hartford Juvenile? Harf Hartford Juvenile Court on Broad Street. And it seemed to go pretty Actu well. Actually, yes. Today, um, I must say, um, Attorney Betty Paul, which is DCF worker. She's the attorney, attorney for DCF. Attorney, yes. Okay. Um, she actually was in our favor of um, my mom's motion and my grandmother's motion to intervene. Okay. So... That's a good thing. That was an awesome thing, and the judge was very understanding this time around, which I really appreciate. Um, That's good. That's actually very good to hear. It's yeah. not often that you hear that. No. Now, I did reach out to your attorney today, and although she couldn't give me much information, um, uh, her statement was, juvenile court proceedings are confidential. Yes. Um... But she said that, and your attorney's name is Lisa Vincent? Vincent? Okay. She said, but her general statement was that she is satisfied with the progress of the case and positive outcome for the child. So that, that, that's nice. Yes. And she said that she was, you know, was well pleased with uh, attorney Betty Paul and the judge. Uh, you know, and how they reacted to the motions to inter, you know, you told me about the motions to intervene. Um, so, I mean, going forward, that seems like a good thing, but we're still stuck that your daughter's with her abuser. And uh, we're not getting a time frame on when my daughter's going to be removed out of that foster home. I just keep getting the answer soon. What is soon? Soon could be tomorrow, or it could be three weeks from now. What's soon? So if you, were to, if you were to speak to Joette Katz right now, what would you say to her? What would you ask of her? I would ask her, if this was your child, would you want your child to be in this predicament? Would you want your child with a known abuser? And How could I don't she think allow you it? would. No. I, don't, I know you wouldn't. I know you wouldn't. 
no mother would. And why is it okay for my child to be put in this position? Just because she's in the state? In the care of the state? No, right. it's not a good enough reason for me. No. You guys are supposed to be protecting the children. You guys are supposed to be keeping the children with family. I have two family members that are, you know, jumping up and down to take her. And it's not happening. It's being looked into, but it should have been looked into. It should have been done by now. Because you had family for her to go with when she was removed. Yes, I did. I did. My aunt could have been here within 20 minutes. I think this is unacceptable for the Connecticut Department of Children and Families to have placed this child back with the abuser. Me too. And all I can say is that we'll, we will keep going with your story. We will keep updating on your story and we will try to reach out to the department for some answers. Uh, will we get them? Maybe not. But, you know, we can remain hopeful and we can continue to run your story. I know this has been very hard for you. We've been in communication a lot. And, um, you know, it's, this is a very sad case and it's also very wrong because like you said, they wouldn't give her back to you and you've never abused her. But yet, they have proof of this foster parent abusing her, and that's where your little girl is now. Exactly. So, yes. every day for you is, is a nightmare, basically. Yes. That's what you've expressed to me. Yes. So, you know, I'm glad that court went well today. I'm glad that, you know, the attorney for the department was, you know, for the motion to intervene, as well as the judge. Because you know, I don't hear that very often. Yeah. Nor do the other people, you know, on Corp CT. We don't hear, you know, good news like that. That it was a good court date. Yes. You know, I so. I've had many of those, so. Is there a difference between the Torrington Court, the Juvenile Court, and the Hartford Juvenile Court? There is a big difference, yes. Um, Torrington Court, is, first, is very small. So everybody knows everybody, and I feel like they talk amongst each other. Um, and Hartford Court, you know, they're not as small. Right. So it's not as, what's the word? Um, Congested? And, yes. And full of it, everybody knowing whose case has what? And yes. And gossip, stuff yes. like that. Yeah. And like Torrington Court, when I was in Torrington Court, my DCF worker, Pam Lucier, um, and the foster mother were like buddy buddy, best friends. The abuser? Yes. Okay. Well, so. that's, that's a, a problem right there, you know? So now we're in Hartford, it's different. Well, we're gonna we're gonna stop for now, but okay. we're gonna catch catch up with you and keep this story updated. Okay. Okay, and we're Thank gonna try you. to reach out to the department and see what they have to say about this. Thank you. Thanks, Gina.